Well, drones have been uh, central to President Obama's foreign policy, especially when it comes to their use for targeted killing. Most people by now have heard of Obama's kill lists, and it looks like the use of drones is not just a temporary strategy. They're part of a larger counterterrorism plan that will soon be cemented in stones for future generations of presidents to understand better. Now, this was outlined in a pretty explosive article in the Washington Post, the first of three in a series that introduces us to something called the disposition matrix. It's become a hot topic of conversation around Washington, D.C., and RT correspondent Liz Wall joins us live now from downtown D.C. Uh, to tell us a little bit more about this. Liz, uh, what is a disposition matrix, first of all? Oh, that's right, Christine. Well, we know all about the kill list, but this actually takes it a step further. This disposition matrix, um, it's secretly been in the works for about two years now. Um, as you had mentioned, a recent Washington Post article maps out the details of this plan. Um, and what it does is it maps out a plan to find and kill suspected terrorists that can't be found, I guess, by uh, drones. And the way that this works is that this matrix it streamlines information from various government agencies and puts it into one single database. So we're talking about suspected terrorist biographies, their locations, uh, the organizations that they're affiliated with. All of this information is streamlined into this one place, and with this information, they're able to come up with some kind of a game plan um, to carry out these capture plans of mobilized personnel and resources to actually track down the suspected terrorists, um, whether that means um, sending out a drone to monitor their whereabouts. Um, so it's, um, it's something like this that um, signals that the Oh, President Obama, the Obama administration's drone campaign is something that is here to stay because, as we know, with these kill lists, um, it's not just one stagnant list where you knock off a suspect and you're down to zero. What we've seen happen is that suspected terrorists keep getting added to that list. We have members of the Haqqani Network, and it's just kind of like a game of whack-a-mole. Once you knock one down, another one pops up. So it seems like there is no end in, in sight. Um, well, Liz, it's interesting to me, too, that, that this is something that, um, you know, even if President Obama wins a second term, they're talking about uh, using this strategy, this disposition matrix, uh, for at least the next decade, um, for, for many, many years to come, for future presidents, no matter what party, uh, to sort of be able to to understand and use as a, as a viable strategy. Uh, it's just so interesting because, you know, from everything we're hearing, especially leading up to the election, these wars are supposed to be winding down. I mean, what do you think? Do you think the secret plan proves otherwise? Well, I mean, that's the thing. The wars are supposed to be winding down. The war, I guess the wars as we know them are going to be winding down, but that doesn't mean that we're literally not going to be involved in this country. I think this um, this report absolutely proves otherwise that the drone campaign, um, this report uh, states that this is kind of, kind of providing this blueprint for future administrations to be able to carry on this drone campaign. And as we have seen uh, in the election so far, or the last debate, um, Mitt Romney, the issue of drones was brought up for the first time. Mitt Romney um, hailed President Obama's drone campaign. And, um, uh, and obviously, uh, it's his campaign, so Obama would continue to use it. But drones um, and the use of them has proven to be a bipartisan issue. Meanwhile, critics are pointing to the fact that the drone campaign has gone far beyond the targeted killings of the original intent, which is to find those and bring to justice those um, that are responsible for the 9-11 attacks. Um, and here we are over a decade later, and it's estimated that the drone campaign has killed more than 3,000 people. Many of these people are innocent civilians, and there's a lot of implications of that on the ground, particularly in Pakistan, the country that has bared the brunt of this drone campaign. And, um, and so I guess something to take away from this disposition matrix, from this report, is that targeted drone killings is something, this is something that has become institutionalized, um, something that prior to 9-11 was frowned upon, taboo, or looked down upon. Today, it seems like this targeted killing is ideal, and there is no clear end in sight. Um, I think it just seems like it is indefinite at this uh, point. All right. Very interesting. Uh, and certainly it seems uh, because there will be a couple more articles about this, um, we're going to learn a whole lot more. RT correspondent Liz Wall, live from downtown Washington.